<laughs> Greetings, humans. Welcome to Age of Goblins 3. My name is Echo the Explosive, and I am a goblin dreadnought, you see it. <laughs> oh, this <laughs> smoke. <laughs> oh, <laughs> did I do that? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> anyway, welcome back, everybody. Age of Wonders 3. And oh, oh, that did hurt. Oh, I won't be doing Echo's voice very often, I can tell you that much. Oh, come on back, Echo. So, yeah, what Echo was trying to say is that... Um, we are back. Age of Wonders 3 is back by popular demand, in fact, so it seems like you guys want to see more of this based on the uh, the feedback in the last episode that I did, my first one last week. And you guys are uh, interested in seeing a bit more, and I am happy to oblige. So, sharing is caring after all, unless your name is Echo the Explosive, so let us continue with Echo. Not quite where we left off, but um, somewhat thereafter. But we'll, I'll, I'll show you guys kind of an overview of uh, what has gone down since that episode. And if you haven't seen that, by the way, that video, I'll put a link up here in the description, uh, down in the description, and also up here in the video, and you can check that out. It's about 42 minutes of our Goblin uh, Echo's younger days as a young Goblin man here, uh, just getting started out. But why don't we uh, step into my command tent here? We'll lay down the map, and I'll show you. Where we've gone since then. We are currently on what? Okay, we're on turn 39. I don't rem really remember what turn I was on in the last episode, but uh, I'll just give it a quick overview and then we'll jump in and start playing. So here is my domain, if you will. I've got several cities under my control right now, towns and a couple of outposts. And I'm about, Echo is about to take somebody's stuff over here. You can see my armies, these little flags. We are going to siege a uh, an independent village here. And I think it's Draconian, if I recall. We'll head down there in a minute. As you can see here, I have some of the map, or most of the map anyway, um, explored. Though this is kind of foggy. This is the fog of war. I don't really know what kind of movement's going on in there as far as troops go. But I do have eyes right now. I've got some scouts out here floating about. And uh, you can see that they can see clearly what's happening around them. But once they leave that area, it goes back to the fog of war. But they're out gathering intel. So I'm just getting the lay of the land right now. And then we're going to conquer everyone. Of course, right now we're at peace with everyone. So why don't we head over to Diplomacy. And we'll take a quick look at the others. Leaders on this map. This is a randomly generated map, by the way. My first. This is my first campaign. And I figure we'll continue with this one rather than start a new one. I would like to play a little bit more with Echo here. Um, uh, uh, well, as Echo. Uh, so let's take a look at who we are up against. But right now we're at peace with everyone. Echo has been playing kind of nicely so far in the sandbox, but that's going to get, that's going to change here pretty rapidly. We have Awanes, the High Elf Theocrat. We have a Goblin Arc Druid, Tana Boslarf. And we have Leonis de Grantz, is who is a human dreadnought. And we're at peace with all of them at the moment. All right, now let's see if we can uh, if we kick some sand in somebody's face. <laughs> now, all right, turn 39. Here we are. Let's just go through all the events here and see what's cooking. So my army requires orders, no problem. Drive away the giants. This quest failed. The giants were way too far from me. I guess I don't get this lovely draconian diet dish. Sadly, that would have been the reward had we killed those giants. But look how far they are on the map. That's okay because we have other giants to hunt down. Uh, we have met the town of Unez, or er, Ernez. These are Draconians, independent. So they're independent towns on, on the map as well. They don't, they're not as ambitious as the other leaders on the map that go out and expand. These guys just kind of hang around and wait for us to come and take them over, which we're going to do. They don't like us. They're they're hateful and we're at war with them. Fine. And, oops. And town of Ernez. Oh, but they want to have a quest. What's their quest? Die is their quest, <laughs> okay? I don't quite understand that, but we'll get to it. And I'm still learning a, lots of the, the, a lot of the ins and outs of this game, folks, so that's why I want to continue with this campaign rather than start a whole new one. Because I would like to start fresh with you guys on a new campaign, and we'll start from the very get-go, creating the random map and so forth, and choosing our, our leader. But for now, we're just going to do this. Okay, here we have the Outpost of Tease, and this is Draconians. They are evil. Our relationship is very poor with them. And it's about to get even worse. You made a big mistake. Your empire will fall. Not so fast, my friends. So we have three stacks. We have uh, several. 
These are these are heroes, not leaders. The one leader is me, Echo, on the map. He's not here. He's down here somewhere. But I do have heroes fighting for my cause, and we have. Uh, I want to take a look at each one of these in turn. We have Mikal Iron Fist. He's an orc dreadnought leading some troops here. And we have a trebuchet here, which is going to be fun to use. I wanted to try that out on camera. And we have Phaedron the Quick. He is a high elf rogue, level four. And he's got a couple of troopers with him. And over here we have Firek. Vrek, the rough skin hero, and he is a level four draconian dreadnought. So, all right, this ought to be fun. So now, here's how this works in Age of Wonders. When we attack, um, if we attack a hex, now can I get? How do I get hex? Oh, that shows borders, uh, chief of grid or something. I don't know. Um, we when we attack, whoops. If we attack a, a, this particular hex here, any friendly armies or even unfriendly armies that are, are around this hex will be drawn into this battle because we're going to go down to a tactical battlefield. And let me just make sure uh, we're going to be kind of spread out. So I'm wondering if I should try to get people closer as long as the siege engines are somewhat protected. And why don't we send, you know, he fair on the quick is pretty quick. He'll be able to move fast. I think what we'll do is move our Draconian Elder over here with this stack. Yeah, that's good. And then these two will be alone, sort of. But since they're uh, they're mounted, they'll be able to move and support either side pretty quickly. So we're going to attack with this guy. And it's simply a matter of right clicking on the town. And as you can see here, this shows you who's going to be drawn into this battle. So here's the guy attacking, Feyron. My two friendly stacks are coming along, and these are the defenders. Now, this is this is overkill. I'm not going to need nearly as many attackers, siegers, as I have brought to this battle, but I thought it would be fun to watch and play around with because I have not used any siege engines yet, and I wanted to catch this on camera and share this with you guys. So, okay, independents go first. Defenders go first because they see us coming. They have an opportunity to prepare their defenses and they are obviously behind a um a little a little fence here spiky fence but since they don't have any looks like they don't have any range units uh, well with the exception of these hatchlings but they have to get closer to shoot they they have opted to come out of their protection because they know they're going to get shot to the dickens anyway so they might as well Right. Sometimes they stay behind there. Sometimes they come out. Depends on the uh, troop makeup, their troop makeup, and my troop makeup. Um, okay. So first things first. They're well out of range of my my shooty troops. So I think what we're gonna do is just kind of tighten things up a little bit, get a little closer, and we'll get ready for them. We'll wait for them to come into range, and then we'll shoot the snot out of them so we're just going to bring people down here goblins now i have this treb i have not used this yet this is clearly for knocking defenses down let's just take a look here we have hurl boulder so hurls a large boulder at target object or enemy unit so we can shoot enemy units at least so that's a long range shot but i can't let's see can i no it's not that long is it don't say it. Oh, wait. Hey, I wanted that. Tactical action combat camera. All right. Let's... Well, let's just move this over here a little closer. Now, you might not want to move troops closer together if your enemy has an area of effect attack. But clearly, these guys do not have that. They're all just mostly melee. So, once again, I'm just going to be bringing everybody in a little closer. And... Getting behind cover if possible, because they do have these little hatchlings, and the hatchlings can indeed shoot. So, in fact, they might even have, that might even be an area of effect attack. Uh, I'm not really sure. I guess we're going to find out range, medium, straight shot. Anyway. Okay, we're going to move all these guys over. We have this, I haven't used this yet either, a flame tank. I'm not sure exactly what that does, but it's got to be fun to watch and figure it out and goblin the swarm daughters and who are you 
Warg Riders. Well, these guys can do some flanking potentially, so why don't we, because they're fast, let's try to move them around to the side. Flanking plays a pretty big role in Age of Wonders. So, that's something to consider. All right, now that we have, okay, we have several leaders here that can do some special functions. We can cast spells. So I think every one of these guys has spell casting ability. Or I can cast a spell as Echo, who's not even here on the battlefield, but because he's my leader, he can reach out and touch someone from far, far away. It just costs him a little bit extra in mana. Oh, dang it, I hit the wrong button. All right, we're going to give these guys a chance, I guess. I was going to zap somebody. You can only cast one spell per combat round, which I guess is for balance reasons. It's unfortunate that we can't do more, but... Um, so that wasn't a huge total loss. But why don't we go ahead and try out one of our... You're still out of range, you stinkers! All right, well, you know what? We're going to get in range because I want to try this. So we want to... Try to stay in the green if possible because we get more actions that way. But if we have to move out of it to shoot, we're going to do that. And I think we're still a little bit out of range. And just a tad more. This is probably a little more reckless than I need to be, but I, I want to see this. So here we go. We're going to do an arcing shot. It does 15 to 23 physical damage. Why don't we take out... Uh, I was going to say take out these guys because they have a ranged attack, but we have a 50% penalty due to this cover here. So why don't we just shoot the chargers? Fling! Bonk. All right, not too shabby. Not too shabby at all. They're down to 19 hits from a total of 40. So more than half. Not a bad attack at all. I'll take it. Now, let's see. They're still out of range of everybody else. Um, so, why don't we zap? You know what we're going to do? We're going to zap someone. Let's see what Phaeron has. Rain of Poison Blades. Blind. Let's just use physical attacks right now. I don't think this is going to be very much of a challenge. So, let's just shoot and kill. Sometimes you might want to use... A, uh, a spell or an ability that blinds or slows down when when you you know when you're fighting a, a greater enemy with greater numbers or uh, more difficult troops you know hard hitters you don't want them to get too close so slowing them down obviously makes sense but in this case we're just going to use brute force murdelation so let them get close and then shoot them all to heck. Now I think... Um, who is this? Mikal has... Okay, he's got a musket which has... These have pretty good range, so I think we're going to get him a little closer. And let's see. Ugh, not really. Alright, let's just bring them all in a little closer and... And wait, I guess. Now this guy has a musket as well. Gonna bring him over here to the side. Goblin engineer can stick close to my flame tank because they have a particular skill called rapid reload. And this reloads target friendly machine because there's a cooldown on a lot of these attacks. Now the range on this thing, it has a kind of a neat flame attack. It's short range, but it does kind of shoot out in a cone, sort of. And I just have to be careful not to catch any of my friendly units in that. This friendly fire does actually happen. Now it looks like we're a little bit closer than I want to be to these guys, so I'm going to move them around here. And again, I'm, I'm probably just being way overly cautious right now because I'm sure we're going to destroy these guys, but... I don't like losing units. Here we go. Oh, that's bad. Yeah, again, I probably normally wouldn't put my um, my siege engine out in front, but I was just curious to see what it did. <laughs> These cannot be healed. 
unless you have some sort of skill that can do it, they don't heal on their own naturally like um, like an organic unit would. But hey, let's go ahead and shoot these guys and see if we can kill them. Bang. Deaded. That's what happens when a big old rock lands on your head. Now, how come I'm not getting tactical combat action camera? Maybe it won't take effect until the next battle? I'm not sure. All right, let's see. Now we can... Uh, I'm pretty sure the killing stroke delivered by a unit will um, will provide experience for that unit. I don't think it's shared among the whole, the whole uh, army here. At least that's how it used to be, and I'm fairly certain that's how it is now. So we can decide who we want to give the XP to. And I think I'm going to give it to my hero in this case. Because that'll do that. There we go. Leveled up. Nice. All right. Now, let's weaken these guys a little bit with some projectile goo. And darts, rather. Down to 23. This might kill him, but there might be a little bit left over. For my hero to finish him off. Yes, there is. Yeah, awesome. Now, let's see what we have here. Melee strength. Target will retaliate, but not if I kill him first. He doesn't have first strike. So we could either just shoot the guy with darts or run up and hit him. Or zap him with a spell. Oh, I don't think I have enough mana for spell. Why don't we just, um, we'll just shoot him. Don't have to worry about retaliation. Oh, why am I all angry? I'm mad about something. Oh, oh, that was it. Okay. Yeah, a little underwhelming for a siege. I wanted to, I just wanted to play around with my siege engines, but sadly, didn't really need them, did we? So now we have taken this outpost. It is now ours, and we are occupying it. As you can see right here, occupied. The city is occupied, and the population awaits its fate. So right now they're all groveling at Feyron's feet, wondering what their fate is going to be. And we have several choices. We have... Absorb. Now, if we absorb the city's population into our empire, that's what happens there. This makes my empire happy. 150 happiness for 10 turns. And we can open up the tome here and read more about our options after we occupy a city or while we're occupying a city. And uh, we can see what each one of these things does. Um, raise. Burn the city to the ground. This renders various city upgrades unusable and the city itself uninhabitable until reconstructed. This is an act of evil. 150 evil points. So that's going to affect how everybody else feels about us. Particularly anyone that is not evil. Anyone that's good, like the elves. She might look at this as um, kind of a, um, well, an act of evil, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> and she might frown upon that and declare war or something like that. So... Let's take a look at some of the other ones here first. Plunder and loot the city for gold. Everything of value is taken, which renders various city upgrades unusable and the city itself uninhabitable until reconstructed. However, so it's, it's kind of like raise, but the difference is that we get stuff out of it. So we're, we're going to search the homes and just destroy everybody's uh, houses and and dig through their, their, their lockers and chests and things. And, and we get money and we get mana out of this. Let's take a look. So plundering a city burns the city to the ground, but we get some cash. Okay, we can rebuild it, though. It looks like we'll need a settler to rebuild, which can be costly and time-consuming, so I'm not sure if I want to do that. Um, another option we have here is migrate the city to dwarves, because we have a dwarven city right now, and I'm assuming that's why we have this option. So I can kick all the draconians out and move dwarves in. This is also an act of evil. It's a hundred... Um, negative points or 100 points toward my evil alignment, if you will. And it will make my empire happy. And it takes five turns. We can also migrate to goblins. And let's see. So these, these are pretty much the same. Now, I think normally what I'll do is I'll either absorb and just make my, my, you know, my people happy. And uh, we'll keep whatever is existing in here. So if I if I absorb, we'll be able to make draconians here. You know, we'll have all the draconian units, or I can migrate to goblins. Now I already have a draconian draconian city over here, which I think I did absorb at one point. 
So I think over here, because we're evil, and we were tending to be good for a little while there, I was doing good things, um, I think we're going to... We're going to do an act of evil here. So let's go ahead and migrate to goblins. It's only going to take one turn. Oh, yeah, look at that. So it takes a lot longer to migrate to the dwarves. All right, interesting. Well, let's go and just migrate to goblins. Yes, I do. It's going to take a little while. We are currently migrating to goblins. And the city is conquered. So right now in the stack, we have minus 200 happiness while we're... Uh, well, left for five turns anyway, so they're still upset that they just got their butts whooped. They'll get over it. And now let us move on. So we can upgrade my hero here. Mikhail Iron Fist is now level three. And he's got seven upgrade points. I must have been holding off. I think they get five every upgrade. And I had two in here as a, um, an old balance, previous balance. Now let's see what he's got. He's got Invention, which increases his spell casting points by, I think, 20. Oops. Let's see what he's got right now. He's got 15 right now, which doesn't really give you much to cast, honestly. That could be good if we want to cast more spells. He can repair a machine. Oh, that could be excellent, because that machine that took damage, the trebuchet that took damage in this battle, will not heal naturally, and the only way to do it is to repair it, so that's nice. He's a dreadnought, so that might make sense for us. Tunneling, we can dig through dirt caverns. This particular map, when I made this random map, it um, I didn't choose underground level, so I don't think tunneling is going to make any sense for us here. Imperial Authority is really nice. So your whole army gets 200 happiness. Lightning Rod Banner, so... okay. I'm not going to go through all these right now, but I think... Oh, Forge Aprons. What's this? All units in the Hero's Army gain plus 20% protection against fire. Really nice. So you've got some skills that affect the entire stack. You know, his whole army that's that happens to be stacked with him, traveling with him. And then you've got others that only impact our, the, uh, the Hero himself. Inflict Immolation is really nice. Does a little extra damage. If you set people on fire... Oh, what's this? Overload. Infuses the gears of target machine with mana, causing it to operate faster and with more power. Target machine deals... Ooh. So it, could de it deals an extra 10 physical damage until end of combat, but might get stunned for two turns after an attack. It doesn't show the percentage chance that it might get stunned. But I think we're going to just go with... We're going to put two in repair. And let's see. He's got 55 hits. We could upgrade... Some of his attributes as well, but I don't think I want to do that. How about if we go with... Um, he's got a gun, so we don't really need the spells. You know what? We're going to we're gonna have him travel with the Siege Engine since he's got two here. Let's go ahead and give him Overload. Which I believe is also a spell that I could learn. But... He won't be able to cast spells that Echo learns specifically, I don't think. So, all right, there we go. Upgraded. And now let's move on. So that was, yeah, not much of a battle, was it? So what do we have here? We have some Draconians hanging out over a, uh, a node here, a fire node. It's not in our border, so we're not going to get the income from it. But we can still go beat them up and um, at least get... A one-time benefit from that. Now, outposts... Outposts... Um, I'm pretty sure outpost borders do expand. Yeah, that's going to grow eventually, so we will get that eventually. So as you can see right now, as we... Since we took this over, we now have this under our control. It shows my border here. And anything within this border is now mine under my control, and it adds to my kingdom. So this treasure site is adding 15 gold... To my income per turn. Very nice. Well, let's just take a look around the map and look at our other units that we can move and see where they are and whether or not I want to move them or do anything with them this episode or just wait till next episode. So we have a little scouting here. A scouting unit. This is my drone that flies about. This is a summoned unit that I am actually cast um, as a spell to summon it. And it requires an upkeep of mana rather than gold. This is very nice. And it floats, too, so it doesn't suffer from terrain penalties that 
ground troops normally would. So they make excellent scouts. But unfortunately, I can't go beyond these borders. This brown right here and the white over there indicates a border of another nation. And if I attempt... Oh, there we go. There's a village of one right there. This is Tana Boslarf's place. Hello, Tana! And if we try to trespass, well, we can trespass. If we attempt to move over that border, we get this pop-up that says, Hey, slow down there, Chief. You're about to trespass. If your army is seen, is seen while trespassing, you will incur a relation penalty. Oh, only if it's seen? Oh, that's interesting. Um, I'm assuming if a unit is nearby, they'll see us. Are you sure you want to enter the domain of Tana Boslarf? And we have a peace agreement right now with her. So I don't think so. I can hit trespass and this unit will continue on. And most likely she'll declare war or something of that nature. Or we can negotiate with her and see if she wants to do some sort of, uh, make some sort of arrangement where we can cross each other's borders, an open borders agreement. So why don't we, she's in the void. Oh, I'm not even sure if I can contact her in the void. I don't think they get cell service in the void, but let's try. I have an offer to make you, honey. She is a hottie. I mean, if you're a goblin, of course. So let's let's offer um, open borders. Of course, that's going to allow her to cross our borders and do some scouting as well. Look at the long fingers on her. E. Um, let's do it. We can also do an alliance proposal. Ooh, hey, we are goblins. We could work together and then start crushing everybody else. You want to do that? I think so. They declare war. No, 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 no. Alliance. And I will send a proposal. And I, we just have to wait for her to get that message. And uh, Goblin's not the most reliable courier. So it could take a while. Because it, it doesn't happen right away. We have to wait a turn. And again, she's in the void. So <laughs> I don't know when she's going to get that message. So we'll just wait outside her border here and find out what she uh, what she decides there. So now Echo, my, hero, my leader, is just outside of this inn. There's an inn here. Owner, independence. So there's just guardians. And these guardians just sit here idle. They don't move. They just guard these locations to give you, provide you a little bit of a challenge and some experience so that um, you can't have it for free. Now, I'd like to stay here because we're out here in this cold, uh, this volcanic wetlands. And my goblins hate volcanic wetlands. Actually, they love wetlands. They hate the volcanic land. Um, and I like to spend the night here at this inn. It looks lovely by the ocean here. Let's take a little vacation. But we have to kill these elves first. And, oh, we're, we're, they're not happy. I mean, would you be happy at an inn at a volcanic wetland? <laughs> not if you're an elf, apparently. <laughs> no matter how nice the ocean is. Well, the, uh, in, in the, I guess this is an inland sea. So we will attack them next turn. Because that's going to take, these, these battles can take, you know, upwards of 10, 15, 20 minutes. So I think we're going to hold off on that one. And then we have a ruin here. Let's just go see what the ruin is. This is my, um, my dwarf arc druid. Another cutie. And we're going to hop in here and just take a look. So this is ancient ruin. It's unexplored. It's got strong defenders. It's a treasure site. Explore these ruins for items. And when explored, it adds plus 10 research and some happies uh, when located in your, in your domain. Okay. We're going to enter it. Now you have an opportunity here to just take a peek inside before committing to the attack. And see if we are, if we have uh, the metal. We have two wargs, a dread baby spider. And a troll, which is a tier 3 monster. This unit is a force of evil. Killing it is an act of good. I wish I could recruit it. I don't really have a choice. I'd like to... I want. Obviously, I want to go in the ruin and kill everybody there. Unfortunately, this is an act of good if I kill an evil creature. And I don't have a choice unless he joins me. Sometimes they will join. Sometimes they'll run away. I'm going to abort this attack for now again because it's going to take too long. I'm just going to put her on guard. And let's go over here. I want to make... Since we gave this guy repair ability, let's move. Let's make some room for the siege engine. That I believe. Yep, right here. Let's put the siege engine here. So Mikal, the orc dreadnought, will be our siege engine boss. And he's got. Oh, we're going to have to put the engineers in there too. Yes, engineers. So let's. Does he have enough space? I have to move somebody out. Um, Draconian Elder. Let's move the Dr Draconian Elder out. And we'll send the Gobbo Engineer in. I don't even know if any of these requ require rapid reload or not. I haven't 
seen that happen yet, but old oh, yeah, see this is hurt. We have to repair that in the next battle. Um, this guy can do that again. We just gave him that ability. Unfortunately, I don't think he can use outside of combat. All right, so now what we're going to do is just get prepared for the next turn, and we'll just move everybody up. We're waiting for our goblins to be migrated there. And we have a new city now, so we've accomplished that much in this episode. Other than that, not a hell heck of a lot happening, and that's kind of the name of this type of game. Is, uh, it's just kind of slow and methodical, and there's lots of choices to do. A lot of the battles can take some time, and we'll just have to deal. But that's okay. So I think we're just going to hold off for now, folks, um, and just end it here. All right, I guess that's it. All right, now we're going to hit end turn and just see what happens. Maybe we'll get a response from, uh, oh, yes, we did. Oh, no, we didn't. Wait, what? Oh, no, no, don't execute that move. <laughs> Auto move, because it tries to complete the path that you laid out ahead of it. So we don't want to do that. <clears throat> All right, so that turn has ended. Excuse me, just had to clear my throat. Oh, Tana Barsloff, she just got the message, just came in. See, we all take turns at the same time. This is a simultaneous turn map. When I when I decided to make this um, this map, you can choose what kind of turns you want. So that it, it was a little bit of a delay. She got the message and sent back a message. She's like, no. Like, really? I'm kind of busy with my own thing here. So let's go see what she says here. Uh, Tana Blossloff has declined your proposal. Sorry, we really can't afford this. So she doesn't want to go into an alliance with me. So I think what I'll do is at least... Let me bug her again. Hold on. Oh, she's back from the void. I don't even... Oh, no, she's not. What does this mean in the void? I honestly do not know. Is that a, another layer? Another map layer? I have an offer to make you. <laughs> Hi, it's me again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she's going to hate us. Yeah. All right. If you don't want an alliance, at least let me cross into your borders here. And I'm going to move over here so we don't accidentally trespass. We have... Uh, let's just go down the events, and then we're going to call it quits. The Dwelling of Antaras has a quest available. Oh, it's the fairies. We have an urgent manner. It could improve the relations. All right. So they're angry with more giants. There's giants... See, there's the same giants. They're way the heck down here. But if we kill this giant, we get Merlin's robe. Ooh. That might be worth sending someone down to deal with these giants. Because they're rampaging down there. And uh, maybe we can send someone down. I think I have a hero down here somewhere. All right. Um, the Dwelling of Antares has opened. So the, these guys opened up their borders for us by accepting that quest, which is nice. Tiz is rebelling. Oh, we just took this over and they are rebelling. In five turns? What does that mean? I think, yeah, I think what happens is they may actually um, spontaneously grow some troops. Oh, dude, wh what are you doing here? Get on here. And they might attack. I, I'm pretty certain Age of Wonders, the old Age of Wonders did that, if I'm remembering correctly. I know an A game did that. I think it was this one. So they might try to oust us. Yeah, I think in the old game, if this town rebelled, it would actually kick your unit out, and then they'd have more defenders in there again. So you kind of have to get some troops in here, or around it anyway, just potentially to retake it. I don't know. We'll deal with that next turn. Oh, let's take a look at this frigate, though. Nice. Nice. Give me the frigate. Give me the frigate. There it is. Wow. I kind of missed that. It's gigantic. And now we can do some exploration by sea. And we can shoot stuff. It has a ballista and a volley of flaming arrows for naval combat. We are going to own the oceans, my friends. Now, I wonder if I can get this into a battle. I doubt it, but we're going to try. <laughs> when we attack that, we'll, we'll see what happens there. And we produce a laboratory and an arena, and we will... Yeah, we'll deal with all those in the next episode. So, sorry. Got to go. This episode's long enough. I uh, hope you guys are enjoying this. And there's lots, lots more to see and to do with Age of Wonders 3 and uh, uh, Echo the Goblin Dreadnought. Echo the Explosive. And we will conquer these lands sooner or later. And I hope you guys enjoyed this and you want to uh, continue watching that happen as it unfolds. So, stay tuned for more. I will be back. We'll see y'all soon. Bye-bye.